Mr. Chestnut, Bank Reconciliation Statements, Questions and Solutions. On this page here, we can see at the top of the page, we have the bank account of Mr. Chestnut for the month of June. So this represents Mr. Chestnut's records of his dealings with the bank. This is his ledger account, his bank account, are sometimes called the cash book. Then if we move down here, the following bank statement has just been received from the bank. And again, you see it's the month of June. And what this represents, this represents the record of the bank's dealings with Mr. Chestnut. Now, if we look at the balance here on Mr. Chestnut's records, we can see the balance at the end of Ju 1st of July, end of June, 1st of July, same thing. The balance is 22,284. And on the bank statement, the balance is 16,000. 139. So there's a difference. So what we have to do now is we have to carry out a bank reconciliation statement, which we will do in two steps. Step number one, we will trace items from the bank statement up to the bank account cash book of Mr. Chestnut to identify any issues, errors or omissions that Mr. Chestnut has in his records. And then the second thing we'll do it will do the bank reconciliation statement. Now to do that, I'm going to start with the credit side of the bank statement, which represents money that Mr. Chestnut has put into the account. I'm going to trace items to the debit side of the bank account or cash book in Mr. Chestnut's own records. That represents money he put into the account. So if I go down to this, we'll start off with the first thing, the opening balance, 12,000, that's fine. And then I have a lodgement number, uh, 101, that's fine. Lodgement 102, that's fine. Lodgement 103, that's fine. Lodgement 104, that's fine. So I'm ticking off all the items that I can ident identify and trace. Now down here, I have a credit transfer, which is not included in Mr. Chestnut's records, so that needs to be included. So I'll just a little square, a little... Uh, block around that and a question mark. Now you'll also notice here Lodgement 105 is not in the bank statement, so that's outstanding. Now I'm going to repeat the process starting with the debit side of the bank statement and I'll be tracing items to the credit side of Mr Chestnut's bank account cash book. So I start here, check number 160, that's fine. Bank charges, Mr. Chestnut does not have that recorded, so I'll put a little box around that and a question mark. Check number 161, that's fine. Check number 163, that's fine. And a standing order, it'll box around that and a question mark. Mr. Chestnut has no record of that. And the direct debit for utilities, he's no record for that either. Now, if you look up here, we see the check number, check number 162 has not come through the system yet, so it is called an unpresented check. So I'm going to put the little letter U beside it. And same for num check number 164, that is an unpresented check, so I'll just put the letter U beside it. So what we have now is, we have one, two, three, four items that are in the bank statement that are not in Mr. Chestnut's cash book bank account, so we need to update his records with those four items and then we'll do the bank reconciliation statement. So first thing we're going to update Mr Chestnut's bank account cash book. So here we have it here. Now I need to put in the balance. This is the balance. So remember the closing balance at the end of June becomes the opening balance on the 1st of July. So this figure here this is the balance at the end of June. So I can pop that in here. There's the June balance brought down. And if we go back here, this figure down here, this 1200 here, represents money that has been transferred into his account from a customer and Mr. Chestnut had not recorded it. So we need to put that in. So that's 1200 on the debit side of Mr. Chestnut's account. Over here, of course, is the credit side. And then back here, I have one, two, three items here where money has gone out of Mr. Chestnut's account 
but he hasn't recorded yet. So if I go and put those in, I have the bank charges, 20 euro, the direct debit for utilities, 465 euro, and the standing order for rent, 850 euro. Now, I have included the items that were missing from Mr. Chestnut's cash book and bank account, so now we need to balance off this account. So we can see the debit side here is 23,484. The credit side is nowhere near that. In fact, it is, I just write it up here, 1,335. You don't actually have to write it there, but we put it there just for the moment. And so the debit side is the larger side, so I'm going to write in here the column total, 23,484. And what I'll do is I'll put the exact same total over here, 23,484. But of course, this side obviously doesn't add up to 23,484. So the difference between 1,335 and 28, 23,484 is the balancing figure, and it's 22,149. And then I'm going to bring that down here, and I have the balance on the 30th of June, closing balance on the 30th of June, which becomes the opening balance on the 1st of July, of 22,149 euro. Now that is the corrected and updated cash book bank account for Mr. Chestnut. That is actually the amount of money he has available. Now the slight issue we have is that the bank statement here is showing a figure of 16,139. So we now have to reconcile our new updated corrected figures with that figure in the bank statement. So what we do is we will set up a bank reconciliation statement. So to start off with the bank reconciliation statement, I'm going to put in the balance per the bank statement. Let's have a quick look at that. That is this figure here, 16,139. So I'll pop that in there. Balance as per bank statement, 16,139. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in the outstanding lodgements. Let's go have a look at that. So we can see here, we just noted earlier, lodgement 105 is outstanding. It has been lodged into the bank, but just hasn't appeared on the statement yet. So I'm going to add that on. And then I'm going to take away the unpresented checks. And again, we highlighted those earlier. This check number 162 and 164. So I'll just pop them in here. Check number 162, which was for 650 euro. And check number 164, 1440. Now I'll add these two together and bring the total out here. 2090. And I have that as a minus figure because it's less the unpresented checks. So this is the money per the bank statement. This is money that Mr. Chestnut has lodged into the bank, but hasn't appeared in the statement yet, but it is there. And this is money that Mr. Chestnut has actually spent. So it's not actually taken out of the account, but it will be going out soon. So if I add up this column here, I will get the balance as per the updated and corrected cash book, 22,149. Now, let's just go and quick and quickly and check that. We can see here, there it is there. 22,149. 22,149. So I have reconciled the bank statement with the cash book bank account, and everything can be explained by timing difference. If we didn't reconcile them uh, using the timing differences for the lodgements and checks, well, then there's an error in the system. There's something else wrong, and it would require some sort of investigation. Now, just to finish off, there is an Introduction to Bank Reconciliation Statement video tutorial available, as well as a number of other questions and solutions. Details are in the description box below. I hope you find this tutorial helpful. Uh, and that's all. Thank you very much.